Hello, welcome to Forest Focus. I've not written an intro for this, but I don't think I really need to. A disastrous night for Nottingham Forest, a 5-0 defeat for Fulham. Players are clearly down tools, and it looks like the end for Steve Cooper. If it's not tonight, if it's not during this stream, it might well come in the next few days. Uh, do get your comments in. We've had loads already. The theme's pretty clear. Everyone's very angry, very sad, I think, the way it looks like it might be ending. Uh, joined tonight by Mark Southerns. Mark, welcome back. <laughs> How are you? How are you feeling? What are your initial <laughs> thoughts on that? What are, what are my emotions? Well, I think my first emotion is sadness, probably for what is likely to come from that result and performance. Um, there is anger, but where it's directed is probably at the players rather than at Cooper. I think, um, yeah, there were some mistakes by Cooper tonight. I think with the selection, it wasn't wasn't the selection I wanted to see, but. Um, but the players let him down again, perhaps not for the first time. I mean, so much anger has been directed at um, at Cooper by um, factions, at the supporters, and I get that. But I think the players have been somewhat shielded from that blame and and vitriol. Um, but tonight, I don't think that can be the case. Um, abject performances and mistakes led to the goals. But we never looked a threat again. I mean, even though it looked like we were kind of in the game in the first 20 minutes, it was still meek. It was still passive. It was still without any threat or plan to, for route to goal. Um, so that was my first observation. And then the mistakes happened and the goals came and we folded. Mm. I mean, the big question, and I think it is clearly, is it the end for Cooper? Do you, do you see any way that he retains his position after a performance like that? I think if I was at the start of the game, if I'd have said, name me the conditions that would get Cooper to sack, I think 3-0 down to Fulham and the Fulham crowd singing Ole as each pass was completed, that would probably be the scenario I would paint that would be enough to get him the sack because that should never have happened. We should never have been in that situation where Fulham are walking around the pitch, clipping the ball to each other and, and showboating with a 3-0 lead before the hour mark. And that was the reality. So at that point, and we think that Mariakas left um, halfway through the game, maybe left before that, but sadly, I, I don't see him surviving that because of the nature of the performance, the fact that there was no fight from the players and therefore, obviously, suggestion that he may have lost the support of the players is only really compounded by what we saw. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't see him getting the Wolves game, sadly. And I'm very sad about that. It's not anger directed at Cooper. He may, I think he made some... I'd have, I'd have put a different team out. I think I'd have obviously started Gibbs-White. I don't really see the sense in taking out Gibbs-White. It's not a rest. He, he must have been dropped. He played badly at Everton, but like it or not, him and Murillo are probably our only two routes to creativity and that little bit of spark that opens up opponents. So you take one of them out... The other one's playing in the back four, where I would have probably played him in a three, so he could at least have stepped out and done things further forward with the protection of two behind him. He stepped out once tonight, and we conceded the goal. Um, so I think it was the wrong team, but from that point on, it's down to the players, and they let him down. Yeah, I agree. I thought for 20 minutes we were fine, and like no better than fine, but fine. And then Sangare gave a soft free kick away, and they hit the post. Sangare gave the ball away terribly. And I know you've got a gripe with Marilla about that first goal. And after that, I'll just keep saying Sangari because I thought he was a disgrace. Um, Dominguez went missing as well. Olerena I'll dig out as well. Like, yeah, he was Embarrassing. Cool. Absolutely embarrassing at right back. Like yeah. literally no effort second half. I mean, it makes me angry talking about the, you know, seeing players down tools because we haven't seen that from Forrest under Cooper, I don't think. Even when we played Arsenal and we were crap 5 nil away, or City. I just thought we were outclassed, but there, I mean, it is, you know, to me, well, that's the first time there's been no effort at all from some players. This is the problem, right? I think the the last two games in particular, we've lost to poor sides. I don't think Fulham are a good side. I think they're mm. beatable. You know, the, we, we have players that are good enough to put in performances that could get a result there, whether it be a point, maybe even three. With Aaron E, perhaps there, perhaps that would be the case. We would win, we could win the game. Without him, perhaps a draw would have been a good result, but we shouldn't go there and get outclassed. No way. I mean, like, and sadly, I watched Luton and Burnley last night 
they wouldn't have gone there and performed like that. And and there's been so much talk in recent weeks. A lot of fans of other clubs have come up to me and go, oh, you'll be all right. There's no way you're going down. And it's like, why? When you look at the fact that Burnley and Luton have got a system and a way of playing and a, and a, a spirit and a fight that we currently lack all of those at the moment. And we are getting rolled over by teams around us, whereas Burnley and Luton aren't getting rolled over by teams around them or even teams in top six. So I I don't know where we go from there. Um, it, it looks broken. It looks like Cooper can't fix it. And sadly, I mean, I don't, I don't want to lose him. I don't want the relationship to end, but all relationships do. And I think, I think tonight is a point of probably no return for him. Mm. I suppose that's always been the case has been against him for a while. Mm. Not against him is not the right word. I think everyone wants him to succeed, but there's fans who've doubted that he can. But previously in defeat, like West Ham, I thought he played a decent game and made errors. Mm. Even Brighton, you know, they played. Brighton were good and we were naive. But the last two games show to me that the players just aren't there for him anymore. We saw that at the end, didn't we? I mean, the fans stay behind clapping wonderfully, but they weren't clapping the players, were they? That was a collective goodbye, no, wasn't it? No, we we heard the supporters singing Cooper's name for twenty minutes before the end, right? So now is that is that the supporters showing support and defiance that we want to hold on to Cooper, or is it a goodbye? I don't know. I'm not there. I don't I don't know the atmosphere and what the feeling is, but I know the feeling from a lot of supporters sitting at home is that probably is goodbye. Um and it's and it's sad. It makes me sad. I, I you know, I, I wanted Cooper to work. I wanted him to turn it around. I wanted him to fix it. But clearly the players aren't behind him to do that. Um I, I another thing I've heard is we're, you know, the players are good enough where we should be doing better. I, I agree with that to some extent, but I do think that I don't think the players are good enough or have been good enough for several weeks now. I think that the turning point for me was the Burnley game. I think when we went to four at the back and when we tried to play more expansive football, that was probably the beginning of the end. I think we went to that system too soon. I presume the trigger for that was signing Sangare, signing Dominguez. To me, Sangare in particular hasn't proved that he warrants that tactical change, that he was strong enough to back that kind of tactical change. We haven't had enough protection of the back four. And therefore, I think we should have gone back to a back three or with wing backs a lot sooner. I don't even think we should have shifted from it until until we saw from Sangari what we thought we would had signed, a, a strong defensive midfielder. Tonight, he was on the pitch with Paulina. Mm. I don't need to comment on how that went. And that that is the kind of player we needed. Whatever is wrong with Sangari, obviously, he's going to take time to adjust. And that's my point. If he's going to take time for adjust, which is reasonable, why did we immediately shift to four at the back and a system that depended on having a strong defensive midfielder when the player we signed was obviously going to take time? I think that was an error. And you've only you can only really look to Cooper for that. Now, was he under pressure to do that? I think he probably was. Pressure from maybe the ownership, pressure from some some of the fans to play more open attacking football, to to lose a low block and play more expansively. From that point on, I think we were in trouble because the players weren't up to that. Not yet. Maybe they will be, but they're not. They weren't, and they're still not. And I think that was the mistake. Yeah. I mean, I've spoken before about my admiration for Palinia, and I thought that's what we might be getting a version of. And Mm. clearly we haven't yet. I mean, maybe we will in time, but at the moment we haven't. And I, I, you know, so bad tonight. So bad. It was all that. Mm. Let's talk about the goals, a few of them quickly. I can't remember them all. Mm. Some were some are etched in my brain. I can. That <laughs> the first I can. one, I mean, mm. so poor from Sangare, but you 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 thought Murillo as well. Like, no, so naive. No, I, I think I think no, I think Sangare was to blame for the first goal. I think it was a combination of the two for the second goal. Oh, sorry. You but, see, I can't remember them all, can yeah. I? So for merging. the first goal, Sangare got one possession and got caught. And then he do, he doesn't have the pace to recover. That, that you know that's you know that's where Paulino again is different. He he has the pace and the ferocity to get back and challenge. I've never seen Sangari do that, or if I, if I have, not often enough. Right, it's not something I identify Sangari with. Um, so 
once once he'd lost possession and they were breaking on us, a couple of good bits of play from Fulham and they're through on goal and they score and convert it. Second goal, Jimenez comes deep to receive the ball and Murillo feels he has to come out of the back four to tackle him when we've got Sangare sitting in front of the back four who should be doing that role. Why isn't Sangare aware and blocking that off or at least going to challenge Jimenez? He didn't. And then Murillo felt he had to. He came out, lost a 50-50 with Paulina. There's that guy again. And they broke on us and scored, exploiting the gap that Murillo had left. So Sangari was to blame for that goal, in my opinion, as well. Because why is Murillo feeling he has to come out and do a job that the holding midfielder should be doing? Mm. It's not, it's not, I mean, Murillo's naive and not for the first time, but he's young and he's an incredible talent. But again, I think we should be playing him in a back three to make the most of that talent because then he could do that and get away with it because he'd had two centre backs behind him. What he had behind him was a Felipe who's probably not even fit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he got caught for the first goal as well, a bit Felipe. It done like he did against Everton where he took that booking for O'Neill and he, he looked a little rusty. But, I, but, I don't hold it. I don't hold his performance against him because there were still moments where he was right. good, and you could see the effort was there, and Murillo's effort was there, and I think Mangala's effort was there, and, and you know yeah. other plays that are given. Like obviously Yates had a shocker for the fifth goal, but I mean just that fifth goal. Actually, when have you seen a four-on-one queuing up to pass a ball in in the Premier League? I mean that that sums it up, doesn't it? How bad it was. Yeah, I mean, the the errors, the, the, the third, fourth and fifth goals were really poor, obviously. Um, and it, it just seemed like everything has sat from our legs at that point and, and mistakes kept coming. Um, Gibbs White came on and tried to provide a spark. Um, but, you know, collectively, there's no confidence there. There's no, there's no will to fight, no passion there. Why is that? I really don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know how we've declined so quickly. Um, I can only think that some of those players aren't Cooper's players and he isn't able to have that connection that he's had with our players in the past with some of those individuals. That would be understandable given that perhaps they weren't. Well, we know he doesn't make the signings. He gets given the players, right? So he has to work with what he's given and maybe the attitude and application of some of those players isn't good enough. They don't. They don't buy into Cooper's ethos for one reason or another. We know with the ego of the modern football that could be the case, right? So mm. it's Cooper's job to try and turn that around and make it work, but he hasn't been able to, clearly, with some individuals there. Um, let's be fair to him. He's been thrown a lot of players and a lot of different egos and personalities to deal with. I thought he was naturally gifted and could cope with that, but maybe it's just been too far for him in this case. And some of those individuals haven't. He hasn't got the reaction he wants from them and he can't get that reaction. And I, sadly, I don't think he's going to get the time to do that. No. And this this recruitment policy has a shelf life for managers, doesn't it? Because there's only so many times you can take a player in, take a player out, keep them on side, have players in the background who are absolutely nowhere near your team in a bomb squad. It's a bit like Southampton's recruitment policy. You keep signing kids and eventually you get burned. And I fear, like you say, that we've, Signed so many players that we've got burned by some of these who are either nowhere near the team or are in the team and, are, you know, evidently tonight don't look up for the fight. And now we've got a lot of problems. Um, just let me change gear very quickly because there's over 400 of you with us. If you need on iTunes and massive uh, positivity around the start of the podcast, which we appreciate, obviously not a positive one tonight. Also a quick... Uh, <laughs> How do you plug the sponsors in a positive way like this? Yeah, um, well, we need a drink. Put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've done it there. Yeah, there if go. you need a drink, uh, drown your <laughs> sorrows, get down to Trent Navigation um, tomorrow or, well, every night for a while. Uh, they're our main sponsors. We massively, massively appreciate the support that the NAV have given us. Um, and, you know, have a drink, drown your sorrows, and hopefully lift yourselves to the Wolves game because there is another game and a chance to turn it round. Um, do you think, I mean, those half-time subs sort of said it mm. all, didn't they? Booking Dominguez and Sangare and bringing on two of the players that are, you know, undoubtedly his players, aren't they? Well, this is the mystery, isn't it? Like, if if we know that um, the, the likes of Yates and Wall have been his players by the fact they have captain and vice captain at the start of the season, we know Gibbs White's his player because of the relationship he has with him. If he's benching Gibbs White, there's something wrong there, surely, right? For he had a poor game, but like I say, he's got to be in the eleven. There, there's not a Forest team that we've got available to us where Gibbs White doesn't get in the 11 for me. 
So in a game where he had to get a result, he had to, I think, I think I looked at it tonight, I think he's got to get a point. If he loses, or at least he's got to get a performance out of that team. Why in that scenario do you think I'm going to bench Mick is white, a player who knows me, who respects me, who will fight for me? Mm. Why did he bench him? What's wrong there? That's strange to me. So bringing him on, what I saw from Gibbs White was he was up for it. I don't think there was anything wrong with Gibbs White mentally in terms of him not applying himself. He, he tried. He, he he did what he always does, which is put in the effort. It doesn't always come off for him, and he, it didn't against Everton. He had a poor game, and perhaps in any other scenario, you do drop him. But in a scenario where you got to get a point, you got to get a result, and you're trying to save your job, you don't drop Morgan Gibbs White, do you? That's that to me says there's something wrong from the off, and that's when I saw the team sheet. I was I was worried, right? Because mm. we don't know the facts. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But that, for me, is a red flag that there's something wrong. And then, yeah, Dominguez and Sangare just weren't there, were they? They weren't factors at all in the game. Um, we were tidy for 15, 20 minutes without, without any degree of jeopardy. There was no risk to our play. We've mm. seen that before away from home where, you know, we, we saw it at West Ham for spells where we had the ball and we were in the match in terms of possession and, Ping in some passes around, but they weren't hurting opponents. They were, it was going back more than forwards. And when it went forwards, there was no obvious route to beat an opponent or open the defense up. And what gets me, and, and I am going to be critical of Cooper before I give him some praise later on, Awanee's injury was key, no doubt. Big loss. And when that happened, I knew we were in trouble. But Awanee being absent wasn't an unknown. It was a fact. He was going away with AFCON. So at the start of the season, or maybe into the season, Cooper and his coaching team had to have a plan for how we were going to play without our knee. When he got injured, that plan moved forward and we had to do it earlier. There hasn't been a plan, clearly. The, what I saw from the team, for me, without our knee, we didn't know how to play and pose a threat to an opponent without our knee in the team. Because we haven't, for me, we haven't. And I know he's a big loss, but we've had months to get used to the fact that we were going to have that loss because we knew he was going away. And we knew what we had to play with. We knew we had Wood and Origi. And no system, no route to goal was devised, no method of play was devised to, to counter the fact we weren't going to have Amonese pace and presence up top. Wood wasn't the answer. It took two games for Cooper to change it to Origi. But he had, he had time to get something in place and to devise a plan that meant this is how we're going to play without, without our knee. For me, again, it would have been probably go back to three at the back and be hard to beat. But he didn't do that either. So I have to be critical for that reason in that our knee's loss is big, but we knew it was coming because it was fact. Mm. I half agree and half disagree. Um, Everton, I totally agree. I thought I could see a plan tonight at nil-nil. In, but we wanted Origi to be a one and he wasn't. Yeah. And then when, when that went wrong, we were hopeless. Um, dreadful. But if, but if that was the plan, Matt, why wasn't he playing instead of Wood two weeks ago? Well, because we reverted back to the, the uh, only plan we know, the one plan, and we try and right. clone him right. in a in a miserable okay. way. So there was yeah. no plan B in that sense still. So, right. yeah, your your point holds up there. Uh, Emily Anderson is good to have us <laughs> with us. I think massive she, I think Emily said she got back early from work to watch it as well. I am as did I, and I um I almost missed the first half. I almost wish I had, to be honest. But yeah, it, it's. I mean, I've I've got to say in defence of Cooper Lowe, the fact that he performed miracles with all those new players last season before we even go into the miracle of getting us up from the championship in the first place. Um, we can't forget what he's achieved, and if this is the last game. It's horrible that it's at Fulham because I think at Fulham, the one nil win in the championship was the game that really had us believing that we could even go up automatically. It was an incredible night. I remember that. I'll probably remember it for the rest of my life. And now we've had a very different evening at Fulham and perhaps a really bad outcome in terms of our relationship with Steve Cooper. So it's it's just, I'm just feeling sad about it, really. I'm, as, I'm angry that mistakes were made by the players. I'm frustrated that Cooper didn't have plans and didn't have a system of play that could get us results without our knee. Um, but I can't be angry at Cooper for very long because of what he's achieved for us, where he's put us, and and that shouldn't be forgotten. And, and some of the anger that I've seen and and Bile directed at Cooper, 
I can't be in support of that, regardless of what I saw tonight, because the man is loved by Forest fans, surely. He can only be for what he's achieved. So we've got to remember that out of tonight's disaster. Yeah, we're here because we've overachieved for two years. This is the first spell where we've arguably underachieved under Cooper. I'm not sure we massively underachieved anyway. I think we've had a few yeah. duff results and we're a couple of wins away over the whole course of it from, you know, where we should be. I mean, I don't I'm not I haven't checked the table, but I assume we're sixteenth and we should be in that bracket, as I've always said, from ninth to sixteenth. But yeah, it's just the last two games, the way it's deteriorated. But I, I agree, it's sad that the, the way it's the way it's ended. It's got Hewton vibes, hasn't it? That Middlesbrough game where you could see it was a there was a lot of resignation and it was mm. over and it feels like that really, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it's a, it's horrible that it, it could be coming to an end like this. Um, because um, I think I always knew that perhaps there'll be uh, more, you know, more progress demanded by the owner eventually. And, and the feeling that to take the next step, we'd have to look beyond Cooper. Um, I don't know whether that was right or wrong, um, but I felt it might come to that anyway. Even, even if we succeeded and we, we stay up and get a mid-table place this season. I always thought that looking forward, maybe one or two seasons ahead, it would come. You know, the tenure of football manager is normally less than four or five years, isn't it, anyway, even when some success has been gained. So I knew it would come to an end eventually. I didn't want it to come to an end like this or this early. I don't think many Forest fans would. I think the overwhelming feeling tomorrow will be sadness if he does go. Um, I hope. I mean, surely it has to be. And... Yeah. Um, and anger at the players. It could, I mean, in a way, it'll be worse if we go to Wolves on Saturday and we see something from the players and we get a result. That I don't know if I'll feel better, to be honest. I think I'll probably feel worse if that's the case, if Cooper's not in charge. Yeah. Once a, once a bunch of players get to manage the sack, you know, they can get another manager of the sack if they don't fancy him. Because we've seen that at Man United. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's an alarming thing that makes me think we're in a relegation battle no matter what now. Because, you know, if they've down tools on one, they can do it on another. Interesting question from Jason here. Was loot in the beginning of the end, in a way? It, it was so bad and so damaging at the time, but there was a way back from it. But since then, it's only been downhill, really. Apart from the Villa game, it was this weird standout, you know, good moment in amongst the, the hellscape of the last few weeks. Yeah, Steve Cooper made mistakes in that game, didn't mm. he? I mean, he, uh, he almost admitted it, I think. I think we were in control. The substitutions at the back came because Willie Bolly was fatigued because of international duty. But you put near Cate on. <laughs> you, you put near Cate on to, to handle the air raid that was inevitably going to come from Luton. The, the same air raid that Arsenal struggled with last night. You know, and they played four centre-backs. So you put the strongest player you can on to counter that. That isn't Joe Worrell, sadly. As much as I love Joe Worrell, He's not the strongest in the air. He's not the strongest centre-back. I've seen him being out-muscled by Wolf Zaha. He's not even a centre-forward last season. So to bring him on to counter what was going to be a aerial assault was a mistake. I think Niakate should have come. He was on the bench. He could have played the last 20 minutes. So he's not the best in the air, but I think he's stronger. And I think he might have been better off and might have coped with that second goal that Luton scored. So I think I look at that and think that was a mistake. And I think Steve Cooper knew that. But he was loyal to Wall and felt he was the player to bring on. Wall had a fantastic game at Chelsea, of course. And so there's some support for that because he did properly win us the three points that day with his performance. But like I say, what we would expect in terms of the types of attack we'd have to deal with was going to be an aerial assault, and it was. So surely you match that with the best player you can on the bench, and that isn't Joe, unfortunately. So I do look at that and think that was a turning point. It was the first game without Wood, uh, without Arani, I think. Was it not? Um, Wood did very well. Yeah, we Wood, got service Wood to him. On. Yeah, we got yeah. service to him. That gave me hope. I thought, oh, okay, we do have a way of playing with Wood. Steve has got a way of getting a tune out of Chris Wood because I think, you know, we had, he had plenty of chances that day. I'm not going to quote XG, although I could. I, that was just annoy people. <laughs> <laughs> he could have got he had, more goals. But yeah, he, yeah, he could have got he could have got more than the two he got. And I, I left that game, although we drew two, I was thinking, okay, we let the points go. Steve made a mistake with the subs. Um, he probably knows that, but we live to fight another day and it looks like we we can cope without our knee because we can get crosses and service into wood. And on a, another day, he should have got a hat-trick at least. 
but then it just went, it wasn't there after that. And perhaps perhaps Wood's performance and our and our ability to feed him was because Luton weren't particularly strong, and they're not. You know, they don't have the quality that other teams have got defensively. Hence, they lost four three in the final minutes to Arsenal because they they're prone to error and they haven't got the quality that other teams have got. So yeah, after the Luton game, it became clear that it wasn't functioning. We're, we're playing too far away from him. Isn't we're not getting in support um, and. He can only win scraps. He's not a dominant centre forward that perhaps he was in years gone by. He's not going to dominate a centre back. And against Everton, it showed they just bossed him and we didn't get close enough to him to feed off any knockdowns that he did win. And like I say, we should have had a system to cope with Aaron's absence because we knew it was coming. Um, I mean, this is a good question. This is going to be my next question. <laughs> I'm so confused what's gone wrong. I was going to say, you know, the Villa, I just Google when the Villa game was. It was, it was mm. one month and one day ago. And we looked yeah. good then. Yeah, well, but yeah, Villa we were poor. very deserving winners. Yeah, but we were, yeah, yeah. if you're going to beat your top six team, generally they are going to have yeah, an off yeah. day. But we, we played our best game of the season, we did. I thought, still. I don't, yeah. But our knee was in the side. And so we are a different side with him playing. And that's fact. And, um, when he's gone, we have no menace up top at all. We have no pace to get over the top. I mean, Murillo's passing again tonight was excellent. You put that, you put our knee on the end of some of that, and suddenly you're getting chances. Or at least you're getting progression up the pitch, free kicks, set pieces. Wood wasn't able to get on any of that. We, he was aiming passes wide to Alanga tonight. Alanga's often not good enough of his first touch or his care of the ball to do anything with that. But and that really, if you look at the team tonight, Hudson Adoy doesn't look fit, doesn't look like he's ready yet. Um, he was abject. Alanga is inconsistent. Sometimes he looks the world beater, often, sometimes he doesn't look like a footballer. So he's very inconsistent. He can't on side, can he? No. So where was the goal was going to come from? Origi, to this point, to tonight, this is his first start tonight. Origi, to this point, I managed to come on and touch the ball what, a handful of times each time? You know, he never looked like he was ready for a start, so I was very surprised that he did start. We just didn't have any menace up top at all, and, and against Villa, we did. It's as simple as that. Aouane changes everything. Right? It gives the opponent something to think about. We get closer to Aouane because we're more confident he's going to win the ball. We, we don't do that without him, and so we're a completely different side, and I do feel for Steve that we lost him, but we knew we were going to lose him, like I say. So... It's just we've lost him sooner. So I'm just disappointed that we just, you know, our plan to hurt opponents just wasn't there. And when people say, well, we've got the players to be mid-table, how? We can't. We haven't. You take our knee out and it doesn't look like we have got the players to be mid-table. We've got the players to maybe fight off relegation from what I'm seeing. Let's, um, this is an interesting question. Uh, but mm. basically, if Cooper goes, who do you bring in with more bigger mess than we are? I mean, is there a case? I don't think there is now, personally. But is there a case to limp through till January with this group of players and this manager and then have a reset still with Steve Cooper? Could you could you wait that long? I think it's um, Wolves, Tottenham, Bournemouth, May United. I think it's mm. four more games if I'm not missing one. And then it's January. Can we Can we stumble through four more games like this? Or would that be a disastrous decision? We might get away with it in the other teams below us. I think there's not a side in the Premier League at the moment playing as with little confidence as much as Forest. I mean, Sheffield United tonight, from what I heard, put on a fight and we're what wilder back. I didn't, what was the score? Did they lost 2-0. Oh, okay. But we're wilder back. Did Salah score? No, he didn't. Um, oh, okay. He went off yeah. after an hour. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. Sorry okay, back to business, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sheffield United, I think... We'll have a bounce with Wilder there. It looks like, you know, obviously to win a game against Liverpool is going to be difficult, but I think they will pick up. I think we could probably afford to take a risk maybe, but not if the signs are the players aren't playing for Cooper. I think if if we'd have lost tonight and there was positive signs, if we'd have lost 2-0, 2-1, and we'd have come away again, well, we gave it a go. And for periods, we were really in it. And we, we had several shots on goal and it looks like we can cope without our knee then I would say, yeah, let's keep going. I don't want Cooper to go. That's, the players are behind him. We've got a system that showed that 
we've got some chance to get something at Wolves. And then when we get Spurs back at our ground, we can give it a real go. Do we feel that tonight? I don't think we do. That's the problem. So is there optimism if we kept things as they are, that things will turn around? I think that's hard to find, unfortunately. I, I don't want to say these things, but unfortunately I don't, I can't, I can't say anything else really other than the fact that I think we have to make a change. Uh, 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 600 people with us. If there's people in the chat who think Steve Cooper should be retained, then then do let us know. And I'm mm. not, I put this on Twitter, I'm not having a dig at Cooper there. He's done mm. an incredible job, but tonight was way too many alarm bells to make me think that there's particularly a way back without Taiwo. So, yeah, I feel like he's um, probably uh, probably done. I mean, do you think you do think we're in a relegation battle then now or not right now? It, let's Yeah, I mean, obviously the points matter. The points on the board matter. But if you look at how we're playing relative to other teams, if you look at, you know, I think or if you look at Everton and you look at Burnley and look at Luton, supporters of those teams will be optimistic that they can fight their way out of it. I don't feel that at the moment. I feel that the level of performance is so low and the confidence is so low and the lack of goal threat that we're showing, plus with a back four, how exposed they are, we're conceding goals, we're not looking like scoring goals and there doesn't seem to be any confidence or way out of that. I don't see that in any other team, including Sheffield United, if if what I've heard tonight is true and they played very well and very spirited performance. Right? So I think we are, yeah. I mean, look at Bournemouth. They've just gone. It's lift off there. Iriola's mm. been given time and uh, he, he, his system, and he has got a very clear way of playing, is beginning to bed in and they're beginning to get results. I don't really see that um, without Aaron E that we've got a way of playing that can get us results. And and obviously that's Steve Cooper's job to come up with that. And he, and, and he struggled. And, and, it, and it's down to the players. It's obviously... There's a debate of, you know, are the players good enough? Should we be higher in the table? I, I'd have to answer, yes, we should be. But there's no doubt that certainly Sangare, I mean, Dominguez started well, but he's been poor last few games. Maybe he's not fit. You know, hudson Adoy doesn't look like he's got fitness at the moment. Alanga's inconsistent. Wood and Origi aren't good enough. So it is debatable whether we have got players that, are good enough to get us mid-table. We played Fulham tonight. They're a mid-table side. We lost 5-0 and we looked miles away from them. So the the the, the cries that Coop, we should be doing better, it's down to Cooper because the players are good enough. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't, I'm not convinced. Obviously against Villa, it did look that way. But like I say, we were a different side of our knee. Maybe it's stupid that one player should be such a factor in giving the players around him such confidence, but maybe that is the case. Mm. I think it was a comment from Bradley that summed it up for me. I mean, I'd love mm. Cooper to stay. I totally yeah. believe that he's going to be a top manager and he'll, you know, he, his next job will be a Premier League job. It might be the Crystal Palace job, the way it's going. I think <laughs> if they lost again tonight. But once the players play like that, uh, then I think you, a lot of managers are done. We saw it with Hewton. I mean, let's do a, if there's a scenario where Cooper's still uh, in charge at Wolves, mm. can you see anything? different being an outcome maybe you know do you go back to i mean surely you go back to gibbs white yates and it, but warrell mckenna anyone you trust really and just back to the drawing board if he somehow is in a job i wouldn't that's what I, i'd love to see that i'd love to see cooper stay and us to go to wolves and, and get a point or battle for a point or even better maybe i don't know if i can i i can't sit here now and say that's likely though because of what we saw tonight. There wasn't anything to cling to. This is it. It's like we we not only lost 5-0, there wasn't anything in that performance that made me think that those players can turn it around come the Wolves game. So I'd, I'd love him to stay. I'd love the players to react positively and us to get a result of Wolves. But if I was the one making decisions, I don't know if there was an, anything there to make me think that that's likely. Now, I'm not inside the club. I don't know. You'd like to think Marekas will have a view on what's going on, right? what's at play. Are the players behind him? Can can he therefore turn it round if they are? Maybe we'll hear from some of the players. I don't know. If there's a crumb of chance that the players are still behind him and that they, 
they do hold their hands up to tonight's performance and they say they are going to be you know pulling everything out to get a result of wolves and maybe he can stay and maybe we can risk it but it's going to depend on what's being said within the club and what's felt there and we don't know we can only speculate we can only go on what we've seen and what we've seen is it's missing something's wrong yeah i mean i i heard they had a good relationship uh, a while ago the manager and the owner but i think the looting game he was the owner was clearly very annoyed but not for the first time with mm. substitutions going awry and I think it's deteriorated since then. And we know he's wanted to sack him before, you know, twice last season. I think Cooper thought he was done at least once. I think he was ready to, you know, say his goodbyes uh, last season, which sort of leads to the question that everyone keeps asking: mm. Who's around to replace him? Well, I mean, it. you'd hope with a worldwide scouting network, the football club can find someone of a caliber. But are there any names that spring to mind for you, or not? Well, I think. If, unless there's a replacement and a replacement that Maracas feels that is better and will take us forward, he won't sack Cooper. He said that mm. last season. He, he, although he supported Cooper, he did say, Cooper, I backed Cooper because there wasn't anyone around or available who could come in who was better than him. Now, you could take that as a compliment or you could take that as, as there just wasn't anyone available that I wanted. Um, I don't know whether the club have got candidates in mind um i didn't really want to entertain the idea that we would be losing cooper so i haven't really paid attention to whether that might be the case i'm sure there'll be a lot of rumors now obviously we know potter's available i don't think that would be the choice of the owner i think it would be a foreign manager and there are candidates out there we know there's managers available are they better than cooper though are they going to come in and make a difference with with the players that we've got who clearly need a shot in the arm and someone who's going to come in and get amongst them and really kind of turn it around because confidence is very low and I don't think the spirit's there, is it? So it's going to take it's going to take someone very capable with a very clear system of playing that's going to get us success quickly. Um, I think it it would be now because of the window as well. You got to think if he delays it he isn't going to change with the window right on top of us. He's more likely to change to give the new manager time to assess the players and then, you know, make a list of what he wants in the window. So that would be around now if he's going to change yeah. it. So unfortunately, I think the timing's not on Cooper's side either. No, because we see that was the statistic last season that once you get past January in the window, the, the, the percentage of teams that stay up after making a managerial change just gets lower and lower very rapidly to basically being zero after March. So, mm. yeah, this is sacking season, as they say. I mean, then, you know, Lopetegui is the name that gets mentioned a yeah. lot. Did a great job at Wolves. Wasn't the most inspiring football. We got the CV that would attract. Potter, he's a he's a project manager, isn't he? He needed a, such a long time at Brighton to make it work. And this isn't the football scenario or necessarily the football club for that, is it? No, I don't. I mean, that's the thing. We saw when he arrived at Chelsea, he's going to take time for his system to come into play. And, you know, he's he's not someone who's going to immediately have an impact, I don't think, on the group of players that we've got. Um, he needs the luxury of a mid-table place and he'll he's a manager who could take us forward to a European place. I think he's a, a good, strong coach who's got a good philosophy and a way of playing that can have success. We've seen it already. But is he the right manager for this for now? I don't think we'll see it that way. Um, I I presume that that there's going to be someone on standby. Lopetegui for me is a negative manager. He's he's not someone I personally would like at the club, but um, I'm sure the owner could see it differently. His his pedigree strong as we know, and he he had some success with Wolves. Um, so he's probably going to be the likely candidate that the press push. Um, there are other names that I don't really want to entertain the idea of coming to our club that I, yeah, this is it. You know, I, unless there's a candidate that can have an impact and we have confidence in, it is difficult for us to lose Cooper, even in the situation we're in. Change for change's sake can only get us so far and might even get us into worse trouble. So that's for the ownership to assess as to whether they've got a candidate they think can have that impact. 
Yeah, I mean, we are a massive bother now. I didn't think we'd ever be in a relegation battle this season because the promoted teams were so bad and Bournemouth looked mm. so bad, but now they're not. And their manager who's come in, who, who was linked to Forest last season, they clicked and they're playing for him. I mean, people are saying Martin is in the comments. He's the Portugal manager and I think he was probably there watching Polinia tonight. I wouldn't particularly expect him to leave the Portugal national talk to come back to the Premier League. There's other names that are interesting, like, Michael Carrick and is it Kieran McKenna, the Ipswich manager, mm. doing a great job, but you wouldn't punt on a young manager, would you? So, you know, there's no, there's not many good scenarios here unless the club have unearthed a gem, like the Frankfurt manager sounds quite interesting and stuff like that. But yeah, it feels bad. It feels bad. Any other final thoughts before we begin to wind up about where we're at? No, I just find it, it's just horrible to feel so flat and down. And I think part of that is not just the result, but obviously what we could be losing in, in the end to the relationship with Cooper, which is, you know, I, I didn't I didn't want it to be this soon, right? And and it does feel almost inevitable that it's going to happen. Um, and we've got to get through that and recover from that. And I just, you know, I just feel for him, given that, you know, how much he loves the club. And he said this recently that, you'd have to be dragged out and yeah, I could see emotion in him when he was applauding the fans tonight. The fans did their part and sung his name and it's hard. It's I, it's really hard. He's someone who's had an impact on all our lives, right? Recently. And to lose him under this situation is, is difficult to take. So yeah, it, it's, um, I'd want a different outcome. I just don't know if that can be the case. Um, and I suspect given how, you know, I often, the managers at Olympiacos have changed that um, that it's going to be the case. He's going to go and, and we'll, we'll find a replacement in, in there in a couple of weeks time. Um, that's the way it's football. It's modern day football, I guess it's, you know, football management is like that, but it just felt different with Cooper. It felt like our, our closeness, our bond with him was strong. And um, to feel that weakening to this point is, is really sad. And a lot of people say he's not Premier League quality. I see the former Notts County chairman messaged me that on Twitter telling me he's a championship manager. Right. Um, I mean, I don't agree with that because he kept, you know, Forrest up last season when I, we should have gone down with the amount of signings and injuries we made. I just feel this group of players doesn't seem to have adapted to his methods. Maybe his methods have a shelf life. I, I don't know, but I, I think his next job would and should be in the Premier League when he goes. So I do think he's a... Yeah, he's a Premier League manager, but um, yeah, it's disappointing. Someone's reminding me to tell people to like and subscribe. One of my friends. Yeah, has. It's a difficult one though, isn't it? <laughs> I know it's true. Give I mean, there are over up. six. Yeah, there are there are over six hundred of you with us. So do uh, yeah. do help me out and help us out because it does make a massive difference. I I, I agree like on subscribe. Cooper. I think I think that um, yeah, he, there's a Premier League manager in there, but he has made mistakes. I mean, I've outlined a few that I felt he's made in recent weeks. And um, that's going to happen. We all have bad days at work, and we make mistakes and look back and go, "Okay." Um, and and let's let's face it: when we talked about the absence of Arani, the ownership also knew we did, we wouldn't have Arani, and and someone felt that Origi was going to be enough cover. That's clearly a mistake. So there's been there's other people at fault here. I don't I don't think it was Steve Cooper who said, "Go out and get me Divock Origi as the backup to Chris Wood and Tawain Arani." Maybe we thought that Rigi was going to be a different player when he arrived, but you know, I think when when I saw him arrive, I didn't think that was going to be enough, and a lot of people felt like we should have got another top quality striker through the door, um, someone who could come in for Arani when the Afcon came around, because we knew it was coming. So I think we half expected to struggle without Tyro, with with Wood and Aaron, with Wood and Rigi there. So like I say, recruitment wasn't faultless, was it? Um, and that's before we even get back to the likes of Sangare, who has disappointed. Yes, he needs time, and I'm I'm happy to give him time, but he was poor tonight. Um, and so the recruitment hasn't been perfect either. So it's um, yeah, it's there's blame in other places as well. Um, and certainly, um, I want to spare Cooper some of that. Um, let's write off you a few final topics that have come up in the chat for the last uh, 10 minutes or so and then we really should go because mm. I, I heard my wife come back in early <laughs> get, get in the kitchen I heard the door rattling a bit um, uh, we badly missed Brennan that was one I mean that goes yeah. without saying we've traded Brennan for Sangari and Murillo to an extent haven't we, we we've redistributed the wealth in different areas of the pitch and now we are 
massively light up front. Well, Brennan gave us goals. Mm. And, you know, when Aaron E wasn't there, we always had hope that Brennan could convert a chance. Um, he, he he wasn't a player, he wasn't like a flair player who could beat three men and score out of nothing. But you knew on, on the break, he would be a threat. If he was out on that pitch tonight, Fulham would have to worry about him. I don't think there was a player on the pitch they were worried about tonight at all. And so he is a big, big loss. We knew that. I hope that in Alenga and Hudson Odoi, we were going to get players who could somewhat, that combination could replace him. But to be fair, neither of those really came with pedigree of scoring lots of goals to replace Brennan. So it put even more em- emphasis on our knee, didn't it? And, and made it even more difficult for us to cope without him. Mm. Uh, one possible option where mm. you retain Cooper is you shake up his coaching staff and you know they are the sacrificial lamb and you bring in an experienced old head alongside him. I know, you know, you wouldn't bring Steve McLaren in back to Forest, but he's done that sort of job elsewhere. Some someone mm. like that. I mean I don't know, there's not a lot of Premier League coaching experience in the staff, I don't think. Much as mm. we love Andy Reid, Stephen Reid, do you maybe I don't know, it's harsh on Alan Tate, isn't it? But do you shake up the coaching staff if Cooper's given a stay well, of execution? It's interesting, isn't it? Because we, we know that Mariakis was was apparently upset that we don't have a set piece coach. So we know he's ma- he, he's looking at that and he's making comments about it. And let's be fair, our set piece threat has been woeful all season. Um, we don't seem to have any ideas or any kind of system when it comes to set pieces. So I think he's got a point there. So, you know, perhaps that is a thing. Max, he has been putting some pressure on, is the coaching staff enough? Is it good enough? Um, the coaching staff normally is is selected by the manager and the manager has staff around him that he trusts and puts faith in. I don't know if it's going to be a, it's not often seen that coaches go around a manager and the manager is preserved. I, I don't see that happening, but are, were the coaches at fault? Probably. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, you know, it's their job to come up with a system to cope without playing without a key player like Tyro. It's their job to make sure we go away from home without him and still have a threat. It's their job to give us a threat at set pieces because we know for teams that are mid-table and below, set pieces are really important. Luton showed us that last night. We didn't have any of that, did we? So, yeah, there's probably some blame there as well. It's not all on Steve Cooper. It's probably on some of his staff as well. Perhaps there isn't enough there or lack of knowledge or expertise there. So you might have a point, but I don't think that's an alternative to the manager going, sadly. No, I think the ship sailed on that, on that one. You need to do that in the summer. Obviously, Jamie Robinson left in the summer. He's a very experienced uh, coach in the background, and maybe you're missing him. I don't know. Stephen Reid came back, and he'd done a great job. So, I'd, like mm, say, I think he's yeah. papering over some cracks. Uh, please don't have Neil Warnock as a manager. Someone <laughs> isn't doing that in the comments. No, I, I don't we, want to talk we, about that. We need to move forward, not back, if we do make a change, God. certainly. Uh, last topic I was going to throw at you. Mm. Um are we better than, uh, who would I say, Sheffield United, Luton, Burnley, and anyone else? Not that it matters, but we need to be better than three teams. But are we better than those three, definitely? I think we have, you know, our best 11 is probably stronger than all those teams, than, than the, the promoted teams. Um, mm. But we're not playing. That's not enough. You, you've got to you, you've got to play with um, spirit and there's got to be, the team have got to pull in the same way. And you look at Burnley and they probably haven't got a better 11 than us. I'd say we're stronger, but they've got a system of play and a way of playing that they believe in and the manager invests in and sticks to. And I watched them lose at Wolves, but they played well. I mean, first 20 minutes, they were dominating Wolves. And and I don't see that from Forest. I, you know, I haven't seen many games away from home, certainly where we've gone and taken the game to the opponent. And this, this is us. This is how we're going to play. We're going to cause you problems. We're going to dominate you. And Burnley did that to Wolves. They, they came a cropper at the back because they have done all season and lost the game. But if I was a Burnley fan, I'd be like, yeah, we lost again, but we played, we played with spirit. We looked like we posed a threat. We could have got a goal early on. Then it could have been different. We haven't often been able to say that away from home under Cooper. Um, so I do think company has got his team playing in a way that could keep them up. Luton have got a play that's perhaps more direct. They're limited in their quality, but 
their methods work, um, they will cause teams problems at Kenilworth Road and they will get some results like we did at the city ground. You know, we got results at city ground through a system of play, but based on solidity at the back and a back three, and we didn't concede many goals or make many mistakes at home. And uh, that's that's what Luton could survive on as well and, and set peace for it. Um, but we seem to have lost that. And I think we lost that the minute we moved to a back four. Yeah. I mean, I do think we're better than them technically and in terms of quality. But yeah, we don't have the fight at the moment. And that's the probably you know if we, we have to show that fight now, and that's the most annoying thing that we had absolutely no bottle tonight. And if we come back and show that fight and we stay up, fine, you know, a new manager comes in and people will come back and they'll love the new manager and they'll get behind the, the team and the club and everything. But the resentment is the way that they've you know absolutely thrown Cooper under the bus tonight. If that's the way he goes out, then I think you know. That's gonna that that should leave a bit of taste in the mouth that so many have been absolutely gutless tonight, and that that should uh, well it'll hurt the fans. It should hurt the players. Mm. The question is, will it? I don't mm. know. I don't know. Right, like I said, I'm gonna do one final plug. Do help us out by like and subscribe. Apparently, I didn't realize my mic was muted when I did that last yeah. time. But, yeah, yeah, no worries. I know. They got the message. Matter. It's all fine. Yeah, exactly. But if you have liked this stream, do us a favour, hit like and do subscribe, spread the word. Like I say, it's been a great start for the podcast, apart from the results on the football pitch, but we do appreciate the support. Mark, any final words before we depart? No, it's just I hope for more positive times around the corner. I I wish that was with Steve Cooper in charge, but I don't think that's going to be the case. And like you say, it is a shame that even if we go to Wolves, if it's not and get a result, if it's not with Cooper, it would leave a bit of taste in our mouths because we would look to the players and go, where was that? Where was that at Fulham? Where was that at Everton? So, yeah, it, I just hope that, yeah, there's more positive times around the corner. And again, if that is last day for Steve Cooper, I want to thank him for what he gave us and where he got us. And, uh, yeah, I, I certainly won't forget him as a forest manager and will look back fondly on his time, regardless of what we saw tonight. Yeah, absolutely, certainly. Um, yeah, someone's asking we'll put this out on a podcast. Christian, yes, we will. And then we're back tomorrow at uh, 12.30 with um, Pro to go through it all again. I can go through it all again for another hour. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there'll be more anger and frustration tomorrow, 24 hours later. For me at the moment, I'm just so flat. It's really difficult. So apologies if it's not very positive, but I guess that's understandable. But tomorrow I'll tune in and see. we'll see if any of the folks can get any kind of positive element out of that and hopefully we wake up and Cooper's still there but we'll see well yeah Prots has already texted me during the game so he's going to stick the boot into one or two so we'll see how uh, if he's true to his word Mike Boynes is telling me to plug the social media I don't know if it's the right occasion Mike I'll do that tomorrow um, <laughs> at Forest Focus yeah. Pod on Twitter at Forest Focus Podcast on Instagram there you go so um, 12.30 tomorrow um, myself Prots Mikey, and very happy that Temps is back with us. Uh, good to have him back on board. Uh, see what see what those guys make of it. Join us if you can. So many people in the chat, very much appreciated. I tried to put as many comments up on screen as I can, but the theme's pretty uh, unanimous uh, about tonight. A miserable, miserable affair. But thanks for joining us. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. No worries. Thanks, Matt. We shall see, well, see as many of you as possible tomorrow. <laughs>